How the heck are you everybody? I'm Fastidious. Welcome back to my channel. Such big news in this video today. Officially, they have announced what the next fusion is going to be. Our December fusion, our Christmas fusion is going to be our first ever legendary fusion. That's right, our first ever shard summoning event for a legendary hero and the cherry on top of that little exciting Sunday is gonna be, it is this guy, Alistair. This guy right behind me, uh, who is a legendary hero, very cool, not even in the game yet. He's coming out tomorrow. Uh, this fusion, when that's actually coming out, more on that in a second. However, the most exciting part, he's an Arbiter. So the rarest faction in the game, they haven't even entered the game yet. They're only Ancient Exclusives. This guy's only gonna be Ancient Exclusive. However, he'll now be freely available as a Shard Summoning event. So, so exciting. So much to break down. We're gonna go over his kit. We're gonna live demo him. My first ever impression, demoing him in the Guild Boss. Lots of cool stuff. I cannot wait to show you guys. Let's get into it. Fastidious. Fastidious. Alrighty, friends, this is freaking exciting. Uh, I am amped up about it. We now know for a fact it is official that the next shard summoning event, the next fusion hero, will be Alistair. He's a dual faction hero, Watcher, and most importantly, Arbiter. So Arbiter, this faction is arriving in game tomorrow. They are going to be the rarest heroes along with the chaos units in the game. They are ancient exclusive. Ancient exclusives. Uh, there are two exceptions. That's Valkyra, who's been in the game forever, and Constance, a fairly new addition to the game. Uh, coming tomorrow, they will get dual faction membership as Arbiters. Aside from that, there's only legendary heroes in this faction, right? There's no epics, let alone rares or lower. Uh, we have the Lord, who's I'm Praetis. He's going to be great, but tremendously rare. And then these four uh, other guys, right? So this is this uh, Pelagios. Uh, who do we got over here? Thalin, who's going to be on the 10x as well. We've got Yonomia, crazy healer, and then Alistair. Uh, so it's really exciting that this guy's going to be freely available to us as a shard summoning event, as a fusion hero. So let me show you those receipts right now. Let's throw on that display capture. And you can see, uh, they really snuck this in uh, right under our noses yesterday evening. Uh, shout out to the several people from my community that turned me on to this news. You can see they posted on Reddit. It has six upvotes. It has no comments. This game does not have such a Reddit presence. You can see there's almost 20,000 members, but only 151 online right now. Not the most lively. Maybe we need to, what do you guys think? Should we vitalize? I don't use Reddit anymore, but do we need to wake up this subreddit? I don't know. Pretty dead, but look at that. Not even in bold, not even in big letters, kind of hidden away here. Uh, you know, his picture's tucked in down here with the rest of the other guys. Like I said, Pelagius, Eunomia, uh, we have uh, Praetis, the Lord, we have Thalen, and then we have Valkyra and Constance. They're newly added. They're getting the dual membership, and there's Alistair. No big fanfare, but look at that. Commanders may obtain Alistair through December Shard Summon event. Uh, that's crazy. Uh, the brand new faction, the Supreme Arbiters, will make their entrance into Taya on 12.09. Uh, so actually, they come on Saturday, excuse me. So they come when the Ancient Summoning goes live. That's when they'll appear in the gallery as well, outside of Test Server and Forerunner. Uh, there will also be a Shard Summon event featuring one legendary hero from the Supreme Arbiters. So our first legendary Shard Summoning event, it is for a Supreme Arbiter, and as we can see here, it may we may obtain Alistair. It's going to be Alistair. Uh, we can actually show this if you want to know the legitimacy. This was posted by Batiste de Mancher, uh, who's actually like the main Discord manager when it comes to news for the game. They even snuck this in in game news uh, on the Watcher of Realms official Discord. Here's Batiste de Mancher again, the exact same post, and you just don't even notice it. Look, all these other things got emojis next to them to, to kind of cue your eyes. This one didn't, just a little asterisk, and would you believe it, commanders may obtain Alistair through the December Shard Summit event. Crazy, crazy, crazy stuff, uh, but he's coming. So in terms of timetable, I'm sure a lot of people are going to ask me about that. I don't know officially. I've reached out to my contacts, so we will see. I'm hoping I hear back pretty soon, but it's almost the weekend, so I might not know till next week. I would presume at the absolute earliest, it will be a week from today. So that would be Thursday, December the 14th. I think most likely you can expect, I think that's possible, maybe the 14th or the 15th, that Thursday or Friday next week. I think most likely, think the start of the week after that, so really building up and heading into Christmas. I wouldn't blame them if they did want to start on the 14th or 15th, because then it won't overlap so aggressively with Christmas and New Year's festivities, but who knows, maybe they want that. 
Uh, I would think it will start between the 14th and let's call it the 20th. So the Wednesday, the following week. I think that's a pretty fair guess. Uh, and yeah, I think you should all be excited. I have not tested him out yet. I threw some gear on him. I built him out on the test server. I have not tested him for one second. I thought I'd give you a live first look, my first impressions altogether. But first, we've got to break down this kit. So, Alistair, the Meteor Sage. I'm hoping he has very cool animations. They're not available here, the ultimate animations, when you click on it. So we're going to see it when we hop into the guild boss. Uh, you can see here, we'll start with the talent. Very cool talent, and he's very, you see, continuous damage, true damage. Uh, he's very much built, I've read through his kit a few times now, very much built to shine, I believe, in the guild boss or more single target focused bosses that are coming. So he's our big single target damage dealing mage. Uh, quite similar to Nocturne. So I'm actually going to compare him side by side. It won't be a perfect comparison, but I will bring Nocturne A5 along uh, side him to, to show them next to each other and see what, what they, they're kind of capable of. Granted, Nocturne A5 is pretty wild. So, talent here. Each attack on the same target increases attack speed by 30. So, if you bring him into something like Guild Boss or where there's only one target, this is 150, right? Five attacks, and if you max it out, it stacks up to five times. The effect, effect lasts for five seconds. When reaching full stacks, uh, each basic attack deals one extra true damage, true damage equal to 80% attack. We need to quickly show you uh, his attack interval here. It's only two seconds. So, you very well can get this down to one second once you get those additional five stacks. As they start expiring, you'll get a hit out every second, replacing that extra 30 attack speed. You should be able to manage him, if not at five stacks, five stacks, comfortably at four stacks, right? He would only need a 1.2 second interval or 1.25 second interval, even though that's not really a thing, uh, to get those four stacks minimum. I think you can get the five stacks. You can see when he gets the full stacks, every basic attack has true damage, so you are going to want him lightning quick to assure that. I hope I'm able to get him fast enough. We'll have to see it. Uh, but we're going to want high uptime, if not permanent uptime, essentially, on those stacks to get that true damage. For anyone that doesn't know what true damage is, that is damage based off of your multiplier. So for him, it is going to be attack. You see 80% attack. It's going to 100% ignore all defense, and it cannot crit. Uh, so you can build this guy with crit, of course, the same way you would with Nocturne. That's why I think it's another good comparison. Single target, magic damage dealing mage that does true damage. Uh, however, attack and attack speed, those are going to be ex exceedingly important for heroes like this. The more I think about this, I might actually have to tweak his attack speed slightly once I show you the build I already put on him. Like I said, I haven't tested him yet. Here's his basic attack. Let me know in the comments what you guys think of this. So it's 100% when skilled up. Actually, let me just show you the build I have on him already since I've already skilled him up, so I'm not going to have to be doing the math in my head. Here's Alistair. You can see big build here, 85k BP. Um, let's go to the skills. You can see 100% damage uh, continuously, right? And the only, this reminds me of Soul Cadence. That's the first hero that comes to mind when it comes to continuous damage. From my testing of Soul Cadence, I don't understand. Continuous damage just seems like an animation thing. It seems to still be ticking at whatever the attack interval you get from the attack speed you build onto the hero is. Let me know if you guys think this is different, if there's anything you know from your testing or your observations. But this basically just seems like a fun little verbiage it doesn't really seem to mean anything but 100 percent damage on the basic attack that's fine he's gonna go really fast on to his first passive trembling shatter when reaching full talent stacks if the target is inflicted with three stacks of radiant erosion basic attack is 30 percent chance to deal one extra 180 percent damage this is when it's scaled up it's worth noting um this is normal damage not true damage what is radiant erosion we'll get to that in a second i'll just break down what it actually does um however this is something that comes from his ultimate that's how he places it deals true damage based on defense of the inflicted target every two seconds so pretty interesting two ways his true damage is scaling right uh, so one is off of the target he's hitting it scales off of their defense so if you're familiar with a uh, Raid Shadow Legends, think like max HP champions that scale off the enemy's max HP. This is uh, scaling off of the enemy's base defense, right? If you look over here, this damage, this true damage is scaling, scaling off of his attack. So he has two different kinds of true damage coming, scaling off of different things. This is pretty cool. Uh, very reliably, reliably, he'll be able to get these three stacks, I think. I'll break down the ultimate in a second. And then here's one other thing. This is the le least, the, the lesser, of the two passes, this is the less interesting one. Noble debilitation. When reaching full talent stacks, each basic attack inflicts damage reduction on the target. This means that uh, the damage that the target 
target the enemy does onto you guys is going to be less. So it will, uh, if you've been having trouble getting wiped by like the guild boss, for example, he's now gonna do 30% less damage. This will have very, very high uptime. It will have 100% uptime if you can keep those stacks full, right? If you can keep him attacking lightning, lightning quick. So finally, he's got this little thing, just like we have with the Chaotic Faction, the Supreme Arbiter Faction. They're gonna have arena special passives that make them a little better in arena. Uh, this is because these are the pay to win factions. They're the ancient summoning only factions. So they wanna make them pay to win PDP, P2P, right? Player to player, uh, it's all about arena. So they gets a little arena boost, attack range increase in arena. Not sure how uh, different the range will be. I guess we could test it briefly. You can see he's got the normal range here. Your like typical range, like what a Comet has or what a Nocturne has uh, before the ultimate's triggered for Nocturne. But the same as like Comet, not the special range like what Vierna has or something like that where you get the full rectangle. He's still missing those corners. Let's now look at the ultimate. Inflicts three stacks. Uh, it's funny how they say three stack parentheses stacks because the, the thing just does all three at once. But three stacks of radiant erosion. Again, this is going to be the true damage based off of the target's defense. Um, it stacks up to three times, but you're applying three at once onto 10 enemies in range, increasing the hero's attack by 35%, lasting for 15 seconds. This is when it's skilled up. Very noteworthy, the cost is only 700. He's got a very low base attack interval at only two seconds. If we can compare that to someone like Nocturne, uh, which my, uh, Alistair is way faster, right? Nocturne, I believe, I want to say is 2.6. Uh, yes, he's 2.6 base. If we look at Alistair, he's straight up two second base, right? So you can see my Alistair, I probably need to get a little bit more attack speed on him, but even without some crazy attack speed build, he's all the way down to 1.2 seconds. Really nice stuff. So because he's got a high attack speed, uh, he'll get many attacks out, get a lot of rage regen based off of attack, and with an only a 700 cost ultimate, this will be cycling. You can easily go two to one on uh, shields in the guild boss. So it should be really, really good stuff. Um, and yeah, I think all in all, he seems like a really cool kit. I think the issue with him is going to be, we'll have to see what kind of damage he's putting out. I mean, that is about to be tested. Uh, not the best test in the world, but it's gonna be demoed, I should say. Uh, the issue with him is gonna be the factions he's a part of. The Arbiters are gonna be supremely hard to get, uh, no pun intended. Uh, the Lord Praetis, I presume, will be at least as hard to get as like gone. Um, super super exclusive so many of you will not run him with an arbiter uh lord so you will have to run him with a watcher lord uh so this is another viable watcher enter entering the game but those watcher lords are going to be ein who we all get for free on day seven assume assuming you collected your day seven, seven login reward uh and then leia who many 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 people do not have he will be tremendous with Leia, I presume. When I actually do a guide on him, we'll probably demo him with, or I, that, at that point, it'll be a proper test. We'll test him out and we'll showcase him with Leia. But uh, here I'm gonna bring no Lord and we'll just see what he can do. But you know, if this guy was uh, Arbiter and Infernal, we'd be cooking with gas, I really think so, because the kit reads really, really good. I'll show you the build right now. I'm actually, as I've been t talking, I've been thinking in my head, we gotta get him in a whirlwind set, get this at least to 1.1 seconds, and then hope the stacks with the extra 150 can bring him down to the even second to ensure 100% uptime. So let's get a whirlwind set going. I still do not have the best gear. I always say it's a story for another day. I think that day has got to come pretty soon uh, because I've got big issues uh, with what they're doing to me on my test server account. But hey, that's a good problem to have, I presume. So we'll take this piece from Pyro. So you can see crit rate went down a bit. Uh, attack speed actually did not change much. Uh, I must have had some attack here. Looks like I'm gonna get kind of boned. You know what, let's just lose a little crit damage. Let's go like this. It is what it is, a crit rate, I should say. So 60.5%, uh, I hate it, I hate it. We're going back to the Annihilating Bite. It is what it is. We'll see what those stacks look like. We'll probably only be dealing with four stacks part of the time, unfortunately. That's really too bad. Um, you know what, actually, let's build him the way most people are gonna build him. I'm glad I'm doing this live. We're gonna put an attack speed, uh, attack speed amulet on him. That's gonna be the most realistic. And you know what, I was gonna try to run him in a soulbound arcana. Maybe that's not the most realistic. Maybe a lot of people can't do him. So we'll do a broken set here. This is the morale set. Uh, these sets are coming soon to the game. They're not there yet, but obviously I have them in test server. And let's get him back in that nice annihilating might I had him in before. Uh, so I believe it was, yes, this one. And what do you got for me? Is this the one with the tax speed? Yes, it is. And now, now we're flying, baby. 494, that should get us down to a second. It does, so we'll have 100% uptime. Keep in mind, we'll get an, another 150 attack speed. Maybe we'll probably be even down to 0.9 seconds then, and we'll have 100% uptime uh, getting the, the full benefit of the talent uh, and ensuring we're getting that true damage. And additionally, with the full talent stacks, we'll get the damage reduction. And with the full talent stacks, we're gonna get the extra damage on people with Radiant Erosion, 
which will apply on the ultimate directly to the boss. So we're getting the full benefit now. So all that being said, here he is still about 85K. He's got very high base stats. That's where a lot of this is coming from. We're going broken set. Uh, we're going Annihilating Might on the left. You can see very high attack. He's got very high attack uh, for a mage. This is like right there with Kriya. I actually might be the highest of a mage in the game. Let's take a peek at that right now. Uh, this is definitely worth interrogating. So let's see. His is 52. Let's bring him to max level. Obviously 52, 48. And Kriya, I believe, was the record holder of the mages, unless there's a new person that I'm forgetting about, which is possible. I don't think so. And Kriya is at 5248. Look at that. So he ties ties our girl Kriya. Super high attack. Uh, which makes it really easy to build him, right? And you want tons of attack because the true damage coming from his talent when he's at full stacks is going to be scaling directly off of his attack. So we got his attack nice and high. I should say particularly high at almost 18k considering we're not running three attack bonus pieces. We do have the attack speed amulet you just saw I put on him. Uh, and then we've got, we did our best for attack speed. We want to get that one second. We did. He's at 494, which gives us our one second interval. Crit rate is solid at 86. Crit damage is meh at 208 it is what it is i'll quickly show you nocturne uh this is not gonna be a perfect comparison right we're gonna have to deal with the shields it kind of is what it is i think what i'm gonna do is go to a lower level you know what no i'm not if i go to a i was gonna say i was gonna go to a fairly low level uh nightmare guild boss like nightmare one uh that might be too low so we'll try it out on nightmare three i, I hope we can still take down the shields because i'm planning on just bringing nocturne alistair and dolores and hoping that is sufficient um but if I go too low, the defense is going to go lower, and then the true damage he's dealing based off of the enemy's defense, uh, the stuff coming from his ultimate, from the radiant erosion he applies, that's going to go down. Uh, so maybe we'll have to settle at Nightmare uh, 2 or 3. Uh, but let me just quickly show you Nocturne. Again, broken set. We went Warlord on the side. Similar kind of build in that we're going for high attack. A bit higher here. A bit lower attack speed, though. And then, obviously, a way higher attack interval since there's a higher base interval that we're scaling off of. Uh, again, not very good crit damage. Even worse. And comparable crit rate kind of is what it is. Imperfect gear, but many people have imperfect gear, so it checks out fairly nicely. They are both in a maxed out tier of Twilight. They are both max skills. It is worth mentioning, uh, this is a juicy, juicy Nocturne. He is A5, the person that had this account before me, right before I started the game and got on the test server. Uh, he A5'd him, which is annoying, but so we have the maxed out uh, duration on Impure Wings. Uh, we've got the extra attack. We have got the uh, the effect of the Emperor Rings. We know we get a little extra crit rate and crit damage. So this is during his ultimate. Uh, we get the crit rate plus 8%. And then most importantly, the first three basic attacks are guaranteed that true damage from Dark Sacrifice. So this is a pretty juicy Nocturne. Nocturne at A5 is a totally different beast. Uh, so let's bring him into... We'll at least be able to take down the first shield, I'm sure. Let's go to Nightmare 3 here. And let's just do... This is just a demo. You know, this is going to be imperfect. I've never used him before. I just want to see the animations, and I want to see what the damage is going to be looking like. So we're just going to bring this team right here. Not going to bring an Elowen, nothing. I'll just quickly show you my Dolores as well, I suppose. Max skills, she's A5. Broken set and Warlord. All that matters is we tried to get her attack fairly high, but I tried not to go crazy high, because this is, I think a lot of people run their Dolores at about 12k. This is about 12k. She, of course, is in a maxed out Keen Wisdom, aka Ancestral Teachings. Uh, so let's get in there. Let's see what we can't do. I'm basically, I don't care about the final numbers. I just want to see on the big procs, the numbers Nocturne's putting out and the numbers that Alistair's putting out. Actually, let me backtrack very quickly. We need to bring some form of healing. So we'll bring Elowen because I think she's geared. If we don't have any healing, we're not going to last too long with all the, the damage over time for the burns and the big hits. So let's bring Elowen as well. Uh, and then we'll probably get a fairly easy 2 to 1. Let's get an Orb of Euphoria on her, or now it's called the Euphoric Orb, I believe. Looks like that disappeared from my account, so whatever. <laughs> Freaking test server, oh my god. Uh, yeah, this probably should comfortably he'll get his 2 to 1 now. Uh, what was I think he had 400 initial cost as well on his ultimate. Yes, he did, so we should be pretty good to go. Let's hop in here, let's see what we can't do. Try to put these guys right next to each other. And uh, we're gonna have to have a, a keen eye, some keen wisdom through our eyes, I should say, when we're peeking at these numbers they're gonna put up. So there goes our Nocturne, there goes Alistair. He looks really cool, I think. Here we can do Dolores, and here we'll do Elowin. All right. So I, let's see how quickly we can get this back up. He's shooting super fast. So that's the continuous damage. It seems to me very much like an animation, like Soul Cadence. It's like this continuous beam, but you can see it's still gonna trigger you know, it ticks on like the every second that you'd expect. So we're seeing from him, it looks like 
It's very hard to tell which one is him and which one is Nocturne, I've got to say. Uh, I'm going to 1x it here. I'm seeing 34k a lot. Uh, let's see when Nocturne goes. It looks like I'm seeing 17, 25. It's a bit hard to see. We'll see on the ultimate. Let's see what we can do to the shield. Uh, maybe I'll even just do one shield and then we'll, we'll, we'll see how we do well we do on the one shield. At some point, I'll probably just close out of the battle and we'll look at the stats. So let's trigger. Let's trigger. Unfortunately, Alistair is not ready yet. So I didn't line that up beautifully. He's coming back pretty quickly. Keep in mind, his lasts for 15 seconds. Dolores lasts for 22. So this will nearly line up perfectly. They should finish almost at the same time. Uh, a little bit uneven, as you can see. But you can see some pretty big numbers. I'm seeing it's very hard. I, I hate the animations. I'm seeing 123. Uh, another 123. Pretty good stuff. Let's trigger Dolores again. Again, this is not a proper test. I'm just demoing. We'll see what we're dealing with here. Might as well get Elowen going. Let's trigger him again. We could have timed it out between him and Dolores a bit better. Nocturne's not going to be able to go 2-1. to one. The second 2-1 to one should be a lot cleaner. Maybe we'll stop after that on the second shield. So Dolores is ready. Nocturne's ready. Uh, it's not going to be cleaner at all. Okay, we're going to have to wait a second. Wait till he's at like 70. All right, now we trigger. Now we trigger. I could have triggered Nocturne first, actually, since his ultimate lasts longer than Dolores. You know, it is what it is. There we go. This should line up pretty good. Big delay on the animation. Let's see how well it lines up. Now we're going to have several seconds of him without Dolores. Uh, but you can see these two guys, I guess we might as well just give it a give it a go. They're doing a pretty good job. Um, this continuous animation is pretty cool. Uh, I, f I really wish it was easier to see these damage numbers. But you can see he's going to be a formidable... Let's trigger them together this time. Uh, he's going to be a formidable uh, damage dealer when it comes to guild boss, no question. Um, you can see there that was the damage reduction thing that we had placed. Or no, that was the three stacks of the Radiant, I should say. Let's trigger uh, Nocturne. I kind of blew it here. Looks like we're not going to be able to get the shield down because of my timing. But we probably would have been able to get it down otherwise. Is there any way we can get it down at the last second? Let's try. If we get wiped, we get wiped. We got wiped. This wasn't supposed to be a perfect test. Uh, literally, this is my first time ever using this hero. I wanted like an authentic first impression. Just by what I was seeing, it seems like he had very respectable damage. Let's hop in there and look at that. Not perfect timings. We didn't bring Lords, so Nocturne wasn't running, you know, with Elder and some Northerner team, or even better with a Twin Fiend or Soul Cadence or Pyros, but very respectable stuff. Um, I think if used correctly, he could put up some big boy damage. I really think so. He is almost certainly going to be out of the meta in terms of teams, but the way you can just use a Silas, even if you're running like a Nightmare and Infernal team, if you don't have a Racha and you're not running a Piercer team, you could do a similar thing with Alistair, I believe. I don't think he'll be on the level of Silas, probably. Uh, assuming you have the Vierna bond and stuff, but I think he's gonna be super respectable and a lot of people aren't gonna have Silas and Vierna or gonna have, you know, Valeria or all these random heroes. But everyone probably will get him. I've put out guides on how to accomplish the fusion successfully. Uh, he's going to put up some big boy damage. I, uh, this is my first impression. So I'll do really proper testing and put out a full guide on him once we get closer to the fusion date. But I really just want to give you guys a test and get everyone excited for how cool this is going to be. Our first ever legendary fusion. We've been clamoring for this since the game launched in July. Here we are in December. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. It has arrived. Guys, if you like my stuff, please like it. Let me, in the, let me know in the comments if you're excited for this if you're hyped if you're ready for Alistair if you're absolutely ready to rumble uh, subscribe share it with your mother and I'll see you in the next one fast idiots